Uh, do you mind uh, making the uh, minutes a little larger? Ernest is asking. Please let me know if you need me to scroll down. Um, also, Bethany, I believe there are two pages. There's another page. Yeah. When people are done, if, if somebody wants to approve the minutes, just give a shout out. I'll move to accept the minutes. And if somebody wants to second it. I don't think I can because I'm, uh, I didn't, I wasn't there. <laughs> That's right. Okay, let me say, I'll second the minutes. Yes, Ernest says you can do that. Okay, if we wanna put up the um, agenda, I'll just go over the agenda. So we'll, we'll do introductions um, after we look over the agenda. Um, we're gonna review the open meeting rules um, that were some confusion about that last at our last um, meeting. Um, we're gonna review the webinar panelists for the uh, um, webinar next, actually this month, the end of this month, um, some advertising ideas for it. And I do have a preliminary um, flyer and um, we'll schedule our next meeting um, it seems like four o'clock on a Thursday seems to be a good time. So we'll discuss that at the end. Thank you, Bethany. So if we just want to, um, we'll just go around and um, we will do uh, uh, introductions. Um, Jan, we'll start with you. Hi, I'm Jan Luby and I work at Perspectives Presently, I'm a former chair and former um, member of uh, the commission as well. Thank you. Betsy? I'm Betsy Beach. Uh, I work in the job training program at Amos House, and I'm currently on the commission, and I'm the secretary of the commission, and I'm the secretary for these meetings, too. Thank you. Yep. Um, Cheryl, you want to give us a little introduction? And you're muted. You're and muted, Cheryl. My apologies. I'm Cheryl Burrell. I currently serve as the Chief of Equity and Equal Opportunity for the Rhode Island Department of Labor and Training. I previously served as the Associate Director of the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Opportunity at the Department of Administration and have been with government for over 40 years. Oh, wow. So wonderful, Cheryl. You're going to be wonderful for this committee. So thank you very much. Thank you. Deanie? Hi, I am Jeannie Desmaris Bez, Del, Valdez, and uh, I'm on the complement representing myself and Rhode Island School for the Deaf. Thank you. Ernest? Okay, hello. I am Ernest Covington III. 
I'm the executive director for the Rhode Island Commission on the Deaf and Hard of Hearing, and it's very nice to meet you, Cheryl. Oh, the pleasure's all mine. <laughs> Bethany? My name is Bethany Lank. I am a contract project coordinator for the commission. Um, half years. Thank you. And I'm Denise Corson. and I'm the, the chair, and I also work for the Adaptive Telephone Equipment Loan Program. So we provide adaptive telephones for people with hearing, speech, and neuromuscular disabilities. So again, I work a lot with the deaf and hard of hearing community. Wonderful. People that aren't here that you'll have to meet next time. <laughs> I should say that I, I use high-powered hearing aids. I'm hard of hearing. But I forget that sometimes when I introduce myself. <laughs> <laughs> and we, again, we thank you, our interpreter and our captioner. So thank you. Yeah. Um, Ernest, did you want to take a second to go over the open meeting rules? Sure. No problem. Uh, in the past, uh, we've discussed OMA, like, it talks about thinking, talking about things during emails and setting up webinars and things like that. But we have to follow legal counsel and they said that we have to follow OMA and that the people here, if you want to discuss about appointments or webinars and things like that, you can't do it online or outside of this meeting or emails, you know, it, Right, right, right. So um, you can't discuss business of the committee scheduling and things like that through email. You can talk about, well, you can talk about setting a time and a date for the meeting. That is fine. But anything else is not allowed. You could have a secretary contact uh, me directly when there's anything that needs to be spoken about. But, and if you want to discuss it with the group, you're supposed to hold off and talk about it during this meeting. Like for an example, you know, if we were going to talk about scheduling the individuals who want to present during the webinar, that's okay. But then if we make a decision, we can't do that until the meeting, you know, so we could approve it then at the meeting. So there's kind of issues and gray areas but what's important is, you know, we can only talk about scheduling meetings in emails. We cannot discuss the business of the committee. Is that clear? Thank you. So basically it would be safe to say, Ernest, that people can contact me directly, just not CC everyone. If they had something they wanted to discuss at a meeting or a concern or something along those lines. Um, well, let me think for a second. Uh, how do I answer that? It's a little bit of a gray area. Suppose the person contacts you directly about a concern, you would need to uh, write that down and you would want to hold that until the meeting to yeah. discuss it. Um, you know, if it's something personal or outside of the committee, that's fine. But if it is in any way related to the work of the committee, you would need to hold that discussion until there was actually a meeting. But you, Denise, and I can communicate directly back and forth. That is fine. And if anybody else contacts directly to Denise, that's okay. Um, but you really have to hold all the discussions until the meeting. Is that clear? But you can talk to me, Denise. You can contact me directly to talk about something. Yep, so I was just saying, so if somebody from... Um, our meeting here said, I want on next month's agenda, I'd like to talk about X, Y, Z. That's fine, as long as we don't have a big discussion on it. Right, that is okay, that is okay. Okay, okay. anybody have any questions on that? 
Jan? So like when, so when we were making suggestions on people that we might ask to be a part of an event that we're doing, that shouldn't happen by email either, or is that okay to make suggestions like that? I think, because I've had to do this kind of thing for the commission, Jan, I think um, the best way to like talk over uh, your suggestions and your ideas is to not do it with Denise because she's actually on the committee, but to do it with Ernest, who's a staff person. Okay. You know, Just, and then more and of then, a general question, yeah. Yeah, but general agenda items, send those to Denise. You know, say, I, I've been in discussion with Ernest a little bit about X, Y, or Z, and can you put it on the agenda? He thinks it's a good idea. You know, you can. If you have a lot to think through, I think it's best to just go to Ernest with it because that's totally okay at any time. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Is that okay with you, Ernest? <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you, Betsy. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'll go over who we've contacted so far, who we've heard back from, and who we haven't. Um, and then we'll go into advertising and everything from there. So I'm just going to share my screen for a second. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Let me try again. Hold one second. Try it again. Everybody see that? Yes. So the highlighted ones um, we've heard back from uh, and and are a yes, um, except for um, the general dentistry, Dr. Leahy. He's a maybe because he works late that night, so he may be able to come um, 7, 7.30. So Denise, yeah. um, just uh, because this is being recorded and it will be posted, do you want to collapse the column D because it has personal information on it? Sure, yep. Okay. Is that good? Okay. Um, so um, we, we definitely have Alex, April, and James Lipback. And again, Dr. Leahy is a maybe. Um, so again, we have one, two, we have one, two, three, four, and maybe five. So that's what, what all we have so far. We have not, um, Jesus with a no. Um, we have not heard back from Heather, Devin, um, I thought this is a really cool one. Um, Streetcar 82, they're not in Rhode Island, but they opened up the first brewery for first deaf brewery. So it was worth reaching out to them. We haven't heard back from them, but I thought that would have been cool if they uh, did get back to us. Um, and Ernest has sent a invitation to everybody. So um, again, I'm thinking yes, of the back that they're probably- Yeah, yeah. Um, some other thoughts um, is we have two people on our, our committee that might want to be a part of it, um, Betsy and Jeannie. Um, maybe you would like to be panelists on this as well. And the only other person I could think of was maybe Myron um, Waldman. He is retired, but I know he's done a lot of work with the deaf and hard of hearing. So thoughts from everyone. Betsy, is that something you might want to be a panelist on? I think I could do it. Um, and Myron just returned, I think this week from, he's been in South Carolina for a little while, but he's back in Rhode Island. I can probably get hold of him. I'm gonna ask. Do you wanna say something? Yeah, I was just thinking maybe uh, a person we I just could contact. Uh, there's a work issue, but that person is kind of young. They're 24. They grow, graduated from Rhode Island School for the Deaf. Johnny SEG, I can't remember, but uh, he's working for UPS. So I thought maybe about him. He's a younger person, you know, 24, yeah. 25. Okay. So, very nice, works at UPS. 
I think he's been there for three or four years, he said. Okay. Us, uh, he drives Uber as well. Okay. So I could ask him if you would like me to. He could that maybe be involved, but um, I don't know. I could ask him if he's interested. Maybe. Yeah, we are looking for six to eight, so I think that would be good. Okay, great. I'll do that then, Ernest said. Uh, Jeannie, your thoughts? I can't remember his last name anyway. Um, I have several, like four or five deaf people who are working at Amazon. Uh, maybe a couple of them could, would be willing to do it on the panel. And then also, oh, uh, Nom Nom, have you heard of that? It's, uh, it's run by a couple. It's in uh, the city that Mazaria, they could maybe come and present. Um, before COVID, uh, they did a pop-up restaurant and gave out food. And uh, maybe we should try to nab one of them as well. So um... Ernest is saying, what about deaf, that deaf guy who owns the pizza in Connecticut? Oh, Jeannie's saying, yeah. Oh, I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name. Oh, yeah. I can't think of his name either, Jeannie says, but I know exactly who you're talking about. So mm -hmm. it would be nice to have a business owner. So that would be kind of a really nice somebody that's an individual business owner. So um, we really have to get like a concrete done by Monday. I'm going away for two weeks. So anything that happens after Monday, I won't be around for. So again, if, if you guys want to reach out to those people and let them know we need to know by Monday, um, whether they're in or out, um, I'm going to share a flyer with you and we can do it two different ways. So let me just share my flyer with you one moment. And you have something to say, Jeannie? Yeah, I do. Um, I also, I was just talking about different deaf people who saw, use ASL, but um, maybe we should have a range. Maybe we should include oral and hard of hearing, um, you know, because, you know, with ORS, like, they could get in with touch maybe with some of their alumni, meaning people who got services through ORS and were successful and have a job. I mean, ORS should have a list of that, of hard of hearing and deaf and everywhere in between of people that they've helped. Um, Paul could, you know, maybe talk to that deaf and hard of hearing group and then maybe uh, contact them. Well, we did speak at this at our last meeting a month ago with Paul, and he did reach out to somebody, but he had to have sign off on that. They signed off on something, and we haven't heard back from them. So it looks like ORS wants some kind of sign off. So again, we've been working on this for about a month. So we kind of have to like end the discussion and, and move forward. So we have, so basically we have been working on a list for a month. So whatever we have now up until Monday, unless somebody wants to take that over from me while I'm away that we need to finalize our list. So let me just share, I'm gonna share, go ahead, Jan. Um, is Carolyn still on the commission? Yes, She's, Carolyn Obrer, yeah. She would be fabulous. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, because you know she, she. I mean, she's self-employed, um, professional, and I think she'd be wonderful. And um, I mean, I know she signs, but she's she's more hard of hearing. Um, yeah, yeah. Ernest is agreeing. Can somebody ask her? I don't have her contact info, or um, I can ask her. I yeah, can, yeah. That's a great idea, Jan. I think she would be just fantastic. Give me the date and time again, um, Denise. I'm well, I'm gonna share something with you and I'll send it to you guys all after this meeting so you have a copy of it, but it's um, the 27th of May. Okay, yeah. To 8 p.m. 
At what time? I'm sorry, Denise. 6 to 8 p.m. That's a Thursday night. Yeah. Okay. This is a preliminary flyer that again, I wanna have done by Monday. So, or what we can do is not have people's names on it. So this is just an example, but I just need to know what we're doing by Monday. Um, we can list the people, those are who we have so far, or we cannot list people. And then you guys have a couple more weeks to figure it out. Um, uh, so that is what our next discussion. So basically the title, which we've kind of promoted a little bit, Ernest had sent out some information, work experiences of the deaf and hard of hearing. Um, the and this is just, like I said, putting some of that verbiage into this flyer. Uh, the employment committee believes this event will be an opportunity to empower members of our community to overcome barriers to securing employment in Rhode Island. And then the date and time of the meeting. And of course, ASL and CART will be provided. Those are the people we have confirmed so far. Um, Dr. Leahy is a maybe, again, depending on um, if we want to have somebody come on later in the meeting and basically what they're going to be discussing, um, a short summary of their work experience, challenges and triumphs they experienced during their job search, how you have navigated challenges and encount you encountered in the workplace, advice to job seekers, and Q&A. So again, this flyer can be done where we don't have any names and then we can be more fluid. Could or I make a suggestion that, um, that instead of having the names, um, you could have a sampling of the kinds of people who are coming like the doctor, the relay, Rhode Island relay manager, you know, the more their job titles than okay. um, the specific names. What do people think of that idea? I like the idea. I was wondering if you might want to think instead of specific titles, um, rather um, identify Field. industries, okay. from Fields, the yeah. industry, uh, educational sector, or however you think we might okay. capture. And without the names, and since we we still are uh, thinking about different people. Uh, it would be better not to include the names at this point until that's more definitive. Okay, I think that sounds reasonable. And we can always add on and we can say something and others and just leave it open ended and then we don't have to have a um, Like I said, a complete name, but we have a working brochure like I mean a working um, flyer um, that we can send out ahead of time. Uh, so again, I'm gonna send that flyer out to everybody after this meeting. So if you have any comments or suggestions on that and I will tweak it. Uh, Betsy? Yeah, my only suggestion was we started thinking about this idea because we had heard from people that were discouraged about getting jobs and had been looking for a long time. So, I don't know if putting one like upbeat sentence like come be inspired. I like that. By mm. workplace success or something. I like that too. Yeah. I yeah, like that. Know, I like that. People want to come to things that are inspiring. <laughs> yes. I like that positive. And that's why we started doing this. It's like, oh, we want to be inspired too. And yeah, yeah, and, and positive. And I think it's a lot of times how you mention something, whether it's taken as positive or negative, how you spin it. Right. So, yes. That's a great yeah. Idea. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Yeah. So, is there any issue, Ernest, if I send out this and we just tweak it virtually over the next couple of days? That's fine because we kind of discussed it here, correct? 
You're sending it out over the web, sir. Yeah, you can discuss it. Yeah, you discuss it and then you can tweak it in an email to me. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. So that's that's wonderful. So um, we're gonna reach out and if everybody, if, if possible, the people that you're reaching out to, um, as soon as possible, if you can let me know if, if they're in or not. And again, I, I'll be back the Monday before that we can confirm You know that I'll send out Zoom information and all that to everybody. Um, you know, the Monday before the, the meeting, uh, the Zoom presentation. Jan? I just don't know if you saw uh, Jeannie in chat uh, recommended uh, Deb Raish from Brid Bridgemark. Oh, yeah. She would be wonderful, too. I'd like that. That's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. Denise. Yep. Um, also, um, Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on her name. The woman um, who used to be on the commission who was a Providence public school teacher. He, she wears high powered hearing aids like me. Um, she's a hearing aid user, so. I actually think it would be good to have some hearing aid users, not just, mm -hmm. you know, hard of hearing individuals. Are you talking about Claudia Martin? Yes, that's right, Claudia. Wow. I can ask Claudia. So Ernest, has been doing wonderfully sending out the letter. So if maybe Ernest, if we, you just give Ernest the contacts and Ernest will send out a letter and then you can follow up with, with that person. But Ernest put it together a beautiful letter and it sounds official and you know like you're being invited and thought of personally. So maybe if everybody who has the contacts that you've mentioned today can just send those and CC me um, with who you're inviting so I can keep track of them. Um, I think that was great how Ernest did that. It was really a really nice letter he sent out to everyone. Yeah, sure, no problem. Thank you. Okay. So can we just briefly discuss all the people that we're going to be reaching out to so that we don't miss anybody. Um, Ernest, you mentioned um, Johnny, I'll say from UPS. Yep, I'll reach out, I will. Okay. And who is the pop-up restaurant? Yeah, I've got to remember his last name, I don't know. Yeah, he's an Asian guy. So that'd be nice too, to have some BIPOC people represented. And who mentioned uh, Amazon? That somebody that worked at Amazon, was that you, Jeannie? Jeannie. People, so if you have some contacts, you can send to Ernest. Yes, yes, okay. And the pop-up restaurant, Who whose idea was the pop-up restaurant? That was Jeannie also. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah, for Mazaria, yeah. Okay. And then we had Deb, which is also Jeannie. Deb, Ray, uh, Ray, I don't know how to say her last name, R-A-I-C-H-E, I believe. Yeah, Raish from Bridgemark. And yeah, then- He said, sure, I'll contact her. And does somebody have the contact for the teacher? What about Margie Malloy from Oso? Oh. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. So we also want. I have I have Claudia, the teacher, Carolyn, and Myron Waldman. I'll send, I'll send all those names, to Ernest. Those are all hearing aid users. Those are all hearing aid users. So, so of all the people we discussed, um, my my issue is we don't want to have more than maybe four people more. So maybe we should put them in an order of priority, like say we need to know, send out something because we don't want to have, like that's a lot of people. So can we discuss who our top four people are on that list that I just mentioned, Betsy? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the hearing aid users, I would ask Claudia Martin first. Okay. She's been a public school teacher. She's had a lot go on with COVID and she's been both virtual and in person. 
Um, Perfect. And, you know, because of ventilation and all kinds of issues, she's had some hearing aid issues. I think she'd be great to talk about all and that. And she's a teacher, so that's great too. Yeah. Okay. Um, who, who else do we think would be, like I said, if we're thinking three more people in that list, who, who would you pick? Oh, I think Deb Brace would be great. Um, and how about Johnny from UPS? Because he's a young guy that's yeah. you know, like, that's, I think somebody that, you know, and there are a lot of opportunities at UPS. And she's, he's Asian. I think that'd be great. Jeannie, are any of your people, um, BIPOC people? Amazon. Yes. Oh, oh, wait. No, let me think. Let me stop and look at my list. Maybe one or two from Amazon. Yeah. 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 They're BIPOC. Yeah. So, mate, what, what was that term you just used? A person of color. Oh, by pocket. It sounded like by pocket to me. B I. <laughs> What is the B-I? I can't remember what the B-I means. Be interpreted, can't remember. Black. Indigenous. Indigenous. Person of color. Okay. Black indigenous people of color. <laughs> yeah, it's the current. So that would be our four people. That would be four. So can we, we'll do round one and we give them a week to respond. And then round two would be um, Myron, Margie, the pop up, uh, the pop up school person. How does that sound? And Carolyn Obrick, maybe in round two. And yeah. Carolyn round two. Okay, so they'd be round two. Okay. So does that sound good? We'll have a round one a week, and then round two. Um, Ernest, if I just send you a reminder that maybe you can reach out, and if everybody just sends those contacts, and I'll to Ernest, and I'll put round one, round two. And we give them a week to respond. Say, if you're interested, please let us know by um, the 13th of May. And then we'll give a week for the next group. And then hopefully we have about eight people. OK. All right. Jeannie? Jeannie? I have a question. So in that first group, you want me to come, you want me to cam contact those two Amazon people? One. And then in the second, like the business owner and the pop-up people. So I just, we just want to make sure we have a diverse panel. Is that all right? Yes. And I will send out what I just said in an email when we're done so that we remember what we're doing for round one and round two. So I'll send out an email. I'll send out that flyer. We'll get rid of names and we'll just, you know, add some more descriptions and please just feel free to flood me with suggestions because the more suggestions the better things look and the better things come out so um but i'll send them out um tomorrow you'll get those out and then like i said uh we're, we're aiming for maybe eight people and then maybe two don't show but if we aim for eight i think that's a, a good number yeah. And yeah. Else? anything no so then um, once we have the flyer done, so um, maybe this is something, Cheryl, you can help us get out a little bit more, um, trying to get people that are searching for jobs out there to come that might have be deaf and hard of hearing to let them know that, you know, this is out there. So, you know, that's a new channel that we haven't had before. We have different channels, but I think that would be a great thing. Um, Paul's not here, but I know he's he's with ORS, so that'd be a great, you know, way to get things out. So, um, if we can just try to get them out to as many people as possible, and um, and then go from there. Certainly, I'll do what I can. Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> Anybody else have anything else? Nope. So um, our. Next meeting will be in June. Um, so I was thinking if we keep seem like this time worked for 
most people at four o'clock on a Thursday. So I was wondering if we could maybe, I have a couple things going on on Thursdays in June, but June 24th. Would you like me to check if there's any conflicts? Yes, yeah. yep, okay. that'd be great. Do that right Definitely. now. So for the night of the 27th, um, who's doing that? Who's spearheading that and do they need help? Um, so I'm trying to think how we can, I, it, it's just tough getting Thursdays in and we're short on time. Um, I think anybody that can, how does this sound to you, Bethany? Could we get whoever is available from our committee on a half hour before to discuss what's going to go forward? Um, so that would be at 5.30 on the 27th. And anybody who's available to participate in the webinar, sign in a half hour early. And then we can, you know, see who is available and we can, you know, have different people either commenting and what, how, you know, however we want to go um, from there. So I was kind of thinking, because we're kind of getting short on time and I'm going to be away, that maybe that would be the best route. Does that sound okay to everyone? So I'm just confused. If the thing is at eight, why would people be there? It's at, at six. It's at six to eight. Six to eight. I'm so glad you said that. Okay. <laughs> now I got you. So 530, if we're, if we want to help out, we show up and see what what's needed. Betsy? Denise, are you planning to be the moderator? Yeah, I'll, yep, I'll help do that, correct. Okay. Unless um, somebody else wants to do it, I'd be happy to hand that over. <laughs> I just moderated something for the commission. It was- Well, would you be our moderator then? And no, then no, no, I think you'd be my, <laughs> yeah. It was four audiologists and it was about the same number of questions and four people took an hour. Wow. So eight people will definitely take the whole two hours. I think don't go over that number. That's why, well, that's my, that's definitely the most. <laughs> yeah. I think tend to be somebody drops out too. A lot of times that we go where they forget because <laughs> it's Zoom. So I think if eight is our max, that we would be fine having 15 minutes a person, which I think, and, and I think people's attention span. So my, my thought process would be minimizing it to about 10 minutes a person and having Q and A for the last half hour would be kind of how I would envision that so that people you know stay on board and stay interested. Mm -hmm. Anthony? Um, so with that Q and A, um, because I would be hosting, would you want um, the chat to be directed only to the host and the co-host, and for us to be selecting questions um, I think to that's present? A great idea. I think we need a little more control because I know we've had other webinars that, you know, people ask too um, many questions. You know. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Bethany. I, I apologize. So the other question I have, so then we would have a moderator. Um, I'm assuming Ernest would make opening remarks um, and then we'd have a moderator. And then might we have someone or we can reach out perhaps via email um, for someone from the committee to co-host with me? That's why I was asking, like, you know, somebody just to- We need to hold for a moment because Tina's frozen. I'm gonna I'm gonna text Tina. I'm texting Tina now. Oh, she's she's back. She's back. Okay. I uh, Bethany went away. I went away. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm. I think where we stopped was where I was saying we'll have Ernest make. Um, Opening remarks, we'll have a moderator, which will be Denise, and then um, someone from the committee we would reach out to help with the co-hosting. Is that where we left off before Tina froze? Yeah, I'd be I'd be willing to do that, um, which is why I was asking, you know, if, if 
there was help that was needed. So, um, but I, I do have one other thing to say, if I may. Um, just in my other life, um, you know, performing, I've also stage managed. And if you tell temp people um, 10 minutes, they will go over. So, I mean, opening remarks should be brief as well. Um, if we really want to do it in two hours, if we have eight people, I mean, if six people show, we might have a little more. Elbow. Yeah, I think that's the moderators to keep people like keep them on track that they have 10 minutes and and we say that at the beginning and stuff and then leaving time at the end for for Q and A. Yeah. Yep, I agree. So Jan, so you will co-host with Beth with, with Bethany. Yeah, I'll show. So uh, Bethany, I guess you can. You'll send me a link to. It's on Zoom. It's it'll be the same link that you use to log in here um, because it's a public event. Um, so. But it's um, with the co-hosting, it would be, you know, um, I think selecting the questions that we get from people um, to give those to um, Denise. Um, and um, also like it, we do have issues with people popping in and um, turning their cameras on and whatnot. So that, that would actually be another security thing that we could do is we can just make sure that during certain periods of time, only the presenters can have their cameras on um, but, um, if we have zoom bombers, we need to get them out. Um, people that are inappropriate, we need to shut their videos and get them out. So, um, during any of the public comment. Bethany, okay. I think since we discussed that here, you could send a list of those duties to Jan. Okay. It's very similar to what we did when we had the employers, you know, checking the chat, getting questions and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Would it be helpful, Bethany, to have two people co-hosting with you, or is that too many people? Um, that's not too many people. I think, um, I believe last time uh, for the job fair, the job fair, I think, was like an hour and a half, if I remember correctly. And um, and we just had one, but if we had two, you know, I think um, even if it were shifts because of availability, that would definitely alleviate um, uh, some of the um, stress of the event, <laughs> the exciting yeah. event. We're yeah. all excited for it, <laughs> but you know. Why don't you be the primary co-host and then I'll help you if you need help or if you need to think about something, just message, message me. You know, like if you could, it, if you can't catch up with all the questions, you could say, Betsy, take take a look for questions because I don't I don't have time to do it. You know, like if you want to rely on me, I'll I, I'll be there. So okay, <laughs> <Alrighty>. <laughs> but you probably should be there. Should probably be one person who's talking to Bethany. I think. Tessa Spindo. Bethany, go ahead. Bethany. Okay, Ernest. I'm sorry, Ernest. Um, before we start. Um, could we get people to write down their questions in the chat and then really just after people are, have presented, then go to that list, you know, and, you know, or maybe even if you had people who had questions, put their name down, then you could call on them, um, you know when the presenters are done and you're ready for questions, then you could call out the name and the person could turn their camera on to come on and ask the question. That's another way for you to be able to control the questions. Jan? I think we ran into a problem uh, one day that we did the employers, um, the job fair with somebody asking a question that really wasn't, it, it kind of got way too personal um, so I, I just think, uh, somebody monitoring the chat for questions and then feeding the questions, I think would work better. Uh, uh, otherwise it might, I don't know. Bethany? I, I think that we might have some issue though with, um, uh, with, um, some of the deaf consumers, um, who would prefer just to pop open their video. Um, I think that we do have some, um, people that are a little camera shy 
And so um, the chat question is a great option. Um, I think that we might have to, as um, moderator, you might have to kind of redirect um, assertively, you'll say, um, if that Yeah, um, you're occurs. right, Bethany, as far as, yeah, deaf people maybe not wanting to type in a, any uh, question rather but than- But I, 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 I do like that idea of, you know, maybe, opening with what questions might you have, you know, so that we already know what we would like to kind of throw at um, our presenters. Um, so there's also, um, you know, there's the option of utilizing polls. I don't, I know we had talked about that in the past, um, just to get our presenters going. Um, they may already have an idea of exactly what they're going to be speaking of, but it might also um, get the, the ball rolling, just as an idea. Anybody else have any thoughts? So um, if we can just, we'll confirm up how the presentation goes and we'll do all that like a 30 minute before where we don't let anybody else into this meeting. Like I know I, I've been in meetings where which I think because you have a waiting room, not everybody does a waiting room and you get people while you're trying to have a conversation <laughs> floating in the room with you before you want them there. So if we are all, whoever wants to be participant has any last minute thoughts um, at, at 5.30, if we click on and we can, you know, do any kind of last minute thoughts that we can add or, you know, give some um, thought to that. Um, last question, do we feel that most of the per like questions should be held off until the very end or as each presenter talks, take questions? I know Betsy and Bethany, you've had some experience with that. Um, what's your thoughts? Should we hold off or just do a couple and hold off some to the end and keep it like a 10 minute window kind of thing? Any, any thoughts? No? Okay. I think I think they're gonna have a lot of um, people with a lot to say about these topics. And I don't know how much time there's gonna be for questions, actually. Yes. So my thought is when your 10 minutes are kind of up, that your questions are up. <laughs> So however much time you're taking to allow everybody to kind of talk and then whatever kind of, you know, whatever we have at the end, we can do at the end. Bethany? I do feel that um, having questions throughout um, by, part, you know, um, the public kind of keeps people engaged. Um, mm -hmm. Two hours is a long format and it can begin to have a lecture like feel, um, but to have people kind of engaged um, periodically um, might be a, a positive thing, but again, it can, can kind of get off track. Um, so it would have to be moderated. Um, yeah. so. so maybe, if, like I said, if we're keeping the 10 minute time frame, is if you talk a lot, you don't get a lot of questions. <laughs> if you don't talk a lot, you get, well, you get more questions. And we're kind of, like I said, I'm kind of thinking the, the 10 minute and when your time is up, you know, like at least get a question in and then we can say, we'll save the rest for for the end. Anything else anybody wants to add? I think we'll know, um, you know, that that evening, by that evening, we'll know if we have half a dozen people or if we have eight people and we'll have a better idea. Yeah. Cheryl? It might be a good idea to set a time limit both for the speakers as well as for Q&A at the end of each presentation. And that way there, the moderator can have some control. And I, and I uh, agree with, I think it was Bethany who said, if, that's you a great idea. It, if you put it off to the end, it might get a bit lost. So while we're in the moment, it might be helpful for people that have pressing questions to be able to present them at that time. So, so I think that's why I'm gonna to try to keep it like around eight minutes and, and just say, we're going to leave a little time and then we'll get you a couple questions. And then at the end, please feel free. We'll, you know, the last half hour 
And that would give us a half hour, de again, depending on how many people we have, which we would have a better idea by then as well. Okay, that sounds good. Anybody else? So um, tomorrow I'll, I'll get out the brochure. I'm gonna change some of the wording. I would love any input and whatever you can give me by Monday, I would love it. Like I said, whatever we can get done by them would be wonderful. Um, we're gonna do um, Ernest. Everybody is gonna send all of those contacts we discussed to Ernest and Ernest is gonna do a round one. And if he gets a no, then he can go into the round two people. Um, but we'll have the A list. And if you get a no, you can reach out to the second. Yeah, and I'll need their contact, their name, yeah. contact information, right? Like email address. Um, some people gave me like the wrong information. So, um, you know, we'll find a way to get in touch with them. But if you have their right contact information, that would be great. Send that to me and I'll get in touch with them. And if you could CC me in that, and if possible, if you could do that tomorrow so I can have a list ready for Ernest on Monday. So if everybody can get those contacts by tomorrow at any time you want, and then Monday morning, I can send Ernest, here's all your contacts, you know, one through 10. And then, like I said, we'll fill in those spots. Dan? Sorry, did we nail down the next meeting on the 24th of June? Is that oh, yes. Bethany was looking into that. I apologize. There's no conflicts. There are no. Perfect. So our next uh, meeting will be June 24th um, at 4 p.m. That's a Thursday. Is that okay with everyone? Okay. Um, I just want to clarify just um, for a number of interpreters that will be needed. Will this meeting be um, 4 to 5.30 like today or will it be 4 to 6? So great question, Bethany. So I, I thinking the next one might be a little longer because it would be a planning for our next endeavor. Um, I know Jeannie had mentioned in a prior email and now that we have the DLT here, um, more bigger scale on reaching out to companies and making job fairs more accessible and, and maybe coming up, maybe this is like a little homework for us, like coming up with a list of companies that we want to be in contact with, with maybe human resource people. Um, uh, one of the things I talked with Teresa O'Brien um, at ORS, which was, which was a great conversation we had, was I've noticed a lot of job fairs out there. We tried to do our own. And then I know we've had discussion why should we do our own when there's all these other ones out there? Why don't we make them more accessible uh, and, and try to teach them how to be more accessible? So one of the people that had a job fair coming up in May, I just asked, do you have interpreters? And they said, no one's ever asked us that. So they said, well, maybe in the future, that's something we would consider, but we never were asked. So it, it's one of those things, maybe they were, maybe they weren't. But if, if there is a job fair and we know it's a coming um, and it's a reasonable accommodation and we have deaf individuals that just have to request it and, and maybe coming up with some kind of way that we can help make our deaf and hard of hearing um, people that are looking for employment, how can we support them that they see a job fair and that the commission sends out something? Um, here's how you get interpreters for your job fair to, so, so that's kind of what the thought is. Uh, you see all, and especially since, you know, I'm working in where ORS is, so I get all their emails. I see these job fairs and I'm like, we should be working with them instead of working separately with them and having the DLT here. I mean, what a great way to educate them that do you have accommodations if a deaf person walks in and needs sign language? Is that something you've considered? Or if you've had a hard of hearing person walk in, do you have any kind of captioning services now that there's apps and different things out there? You know, are you being um, available and accessible 
to people that are walking in there. So again, does everything need to be asked for or should you just be more accessible for everybody? So that's kind of like a thought for the future. Do you have any thoughts on that, Cheryl? Yes, actually, I, when you said that, my immediate thought was not only employment, but how about training and, and other services that are available through the DLT? Um, and, and this is a broad issue that I've been tasked with um, addressing. So my position was newly created uh, to try, try and get to some of these really substantive issues that have been overlooked or underexplored. Uh, so I'm, I'm really glad that you made that uh, comment because it gives me a chance to really look a little deeper at how we provide services. You know, my goal and my hope is that we will be uh, not only uh, more representative of the broader population, inclusive of persons uh, who are deaf and hard of hearing, um, but also that um, that we're looking at ourselves uh, more broadly uh, to be inclusive I and mean, have that mindset where regardless of the issue that we're thinking more broadly. So, um, you know, we're dealing and grappling with issues right now with um, LEP, you know, limited English proficient individuals. And that's um, another area that we're exploring. So um, I'm more than happy to begin that dialogue where it hasn't yet begun and to bring forth uh, these concerns and these issues so that uh, we can make sure that we're more inclusive, more representative and more uh, reflective of, of the entire population. So thank you, Cheryl. That's why I think it's fabulous that you came in when you did because it, I think we're a small group and we can be working bigger instead of just working small in, a, in our own little group. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm delighted to be a part of the conversation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh -huh. and send all your contacts we talked about to me and Ernest tomorrow. And then um, I will send out a flyer that we can, you know, tweak up um, so that we have that ready to go. So thank you all and um, look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks. Thank Jimmy. you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.